Welcome to the back roads of British Columbia, Canada, where trophy hunters come each spring to hunt and kill grizzly bears, one of the world's greatest large carnivores, just to get a rug to throw on the floor and a head to nail to the wall. Why does this controversial hunt continue to happen? Is it the sport, the money, the science, public demand, or is it the politics? My name is Johnny Marriott, and this episode, I'll be exposing you once again to the trophy grizzly bear hunt in British Columbia. Twenty years ago, I was on a logging road just like this one up by Prince George when I came across a dead grizzly bear on the side of the road. It was an extremely disturbing sight. It had been skinned completely, its head and its paws cut off, and it was really my first face-to-face -face encounter with what happens when a grizzly bear gets hunted. A year later, I was on a logging road just north of Revelstoke when I ran into the first grizzly bear hunters that I'd ever met in person. Uh, we ended up getting into a pretty long conversation and one of the things that I really wanted to know, my big question was, why do they hunt grizzly bears? I really wanted to get some insight into what it was that drove them to trophy hunt. Many trophy hunters say that they hunt grizzlies for the thrill and the experience of pitting themselves against the great bear and spending quality time outdoors. But that doesn't explain their need to take the bear's life. Why not just pick up a camera and hunt that way? One of the things the hunters brought up was that they really enjoy the sport of grizzly bear hunting. Now trust me, I'm as big a fan of sports as anybody out there. My wife can attest to that. Sports are entertaining, they're fun, they're competitive, and they're about pitting one team or individual against another in a fair contest. But no one dies when the game is over. Even the most violent sports aren't about killing an unsuspecting victim. I quickly learned that these trophy hunters were very different than the other hunters, like my dad, that I grew up knowing in Salmon Arm. Trophy hunters don't hunt to put food on the table. The truth is, trophy hunting is really about bloodlust. Trophy hunters simply enjoy killing. If needlessly killing grizzly bears just sounds wrong to you, you're not alone. A 2015 poll by Insights West found that 91% of British Columbians opposed the trophy grizzly bear hunt. And it's not just city folk. In fact, the same poll found that 92% of rural British Columbians also opposed the hunt. So why then, if the vast majority of people are against the hunt, does it still continue? I decided to look into the science to see if it supported the hunt. Maybe killing grizzlies stops them from overpopulating throughout the province. But it doesn't. I talked to both grizzly bear experts and biologists, and they all agreed that grizzly bears regulate their own numbers. In fact, the science is very much against the hunt, not for it. Research from a team of biologists from three of Canada's leading universities in 2013 found that grizzly bear kill limits throughout the province were being exceeded up to 70% of the time. Even worse, the study concluded that female grizzly bears, which are more vital to the population than the males, were being overhunted in more than half of the province's management units. So if it's not the science, then what is it? I realized that I had to look into the economics of the hunt. Was it possible that the hunt is simply too lucrative for the provincial government to give up? I discovered the exact opposite was true. First off, it's generally recognized that the cost of the administration of the hunt is actually more than the total revenues collected by the provincial government from grizzly bear licenses and tags. What that means in plain English is that if you're a BC taxpayer, your tax dollars are subsidizing a grizzly hunt program that 91% of you disagree with. Second, one of the most common arguments that the BC government uses to keep the hunt active is that it's very important to local economies and to the revenues of guide outfitters. 
But when the Center for Responsible Travel, based in Washington, D.C., and affiliated with Stanford University, studied the economic impacts of bear viewing tourism versus bear hunting in the Great Bear Rainforest in 2012 on BC's coast, the results were startling. They discovered that the jobs and revenues that came in from bear viewing tourism absolutely dwarfed those from bear hunting. In fact, the study showed that bear viewing groups in that region generated more than 12 times the visitor spending than bear hunting did. Total viewing expenditures for bear viewing tourism were $15.1 million in that year, compared to just $1.2 million from bear hunting. Bear viewing also directly contributed $7.3 million directly to government coffers, compared to just $660,000 from bear hunting. The report further concluded that bear viewing tourism generated 510 jobs, including 133 full-time positions, compared to just 11 jobs and five full-time positions from bear hunting. After the study was released and gained international media attention, some members of the BC government and the Guide Outfitters Association of British Columbia suggested that bear viewing and bear hunting were actually compatible activities that could coexist side by side. Really? How do you take people who are hoping to see a live bear into an area where they might actually see a bear get shot and killed? Not only is that a potential safety issue, but the two groups are complete opposites. They're like oil and water. They just don't mix. We created Exposed to encourage people to think about the issues our wildlife and environment face. We hope that this episode has shown you that the grizzly bear hunt in British Columbia needs to end. It has no place in today's society and it has no basis in science or economics. And it's not just BC dealing with this issue. There's no need for a grizzly bear hunt anywhere in North America. Ending the hunt would be better for local economies, ecosystems, and most importantly, the bears. Help us ensure that the only grizzly trophies people take are photographs and memories, not heads and pelts. Please help be a steward for our environment and share this message far and wide across your social media channels and take action by clicking the link at the end of the episode or visiting exposedwithjohnemarriott.com. It's time we stood up for our wildlife and our economy and encourage a change in the way our provincial and state governments treat bears so that future generations can grow up in a world where grizzly bears are protected and thriving.